All right, this video is going to be more for the new beekeepers that forget to put a frame in, forget to put frames in a put a box on, and forget to put boxes or frames in the boxes, two or three bo uh, frames, or use spacers on top, and the bees get up there and build comb. You've got to be really, really careful when you're taking this out because if you don't, it's always been my experience, more than likely the queen is up here. I've already went through the box and haven't found her, so that gives me a good idea that she's probably up here somewhere. I always use J-hooks. J-hooks are useless for this. I've got a knife that I've bent to a 90 degree and I don't know where it's at. I looked and looked and can't find it. This is the next best thing. So you can get in there, kind of easily scrape the, the comb loose with minimal damage to the comb and minimal damage to any of the bees. But just kind of ease through it. You could, if you wanted to, really piss them off which I'm not in the mood for since this is a nice cloudy day, rain's on its way. And something told me I need to get in this box. A friend of mine that turned me on to these boxes, Dustin Davis, said that he didn't have problems with his building up there and that, this is basically all he runs. Well, I must have a rogue brand of bees it's funny because he's got a lot of the same genetics I do but for some reason these guys wanted to build up their ladies and these boxes come with a propolis trap you lay on top if you watch the latest updated video on this hive style I'll take you over and show you what one looks like on the hive. I didn't actually have one with me. I ought to pause the video and go get one so I can show you what I'm talking about. I think I'll do that. All right, we're back. This is what it looks like. Not the greatest design in the world, but also the lid provides enough room for a feeder, which I did not buy. So, I thought I can make a, a pan feeder to go in it. So, I'm going to make a pan feeder sometime this spring or summer when I'm not covered up like I am in the spring to feed them with if I have to put sugar syrup on them this fall. And as normal bees, this is all drawn out just about in drone comb. And just about all of this has drone larvae in it. Because there was a little bit of an overcrowding issue. Now that we're down to where you can actually get in there, just be very gentle. Take one piece out at a time. Until you find the queen, you've got to be kind of careful. After you find the queen, you can just start scraping it off a little bit faster and a little bit less careful.
know if she was in that big clump of bees or not, but didn't want to take a chance of her being in it and falling to the ground. And me and my size 13 dispatching a perfectly darn good queen. Because this was a split and a buck fast grass, so definitely don't want to lose her. Kind of basically the same way you'd do a cutout if you were doing a cutout of a building. You go real slow and real easy till you find the queen and then you can pick up the pace. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is basically it. And all I've got to do is just and I just saw her. The queen is right back in here in this clump. Yep, right there she is. Right there. I don't know if you can see her. Right there. See her? So all I'm going to do is just let her ease on down into the box. Make sure she's not on the outside. And those bee brushes you guys have, they're about useless. They're good at making bees mad. Turkey feathers, buzzard feathers, anything that's got a good bit of natural fibers to it. Won't make the bees mad. They won't get stung. Because that's the point, when I pull honey, I'm using that turkey feather, slinging them bees everywhere, and I do not get stung. 99% of the time when I get stung, I'm being stupid. not paying attention and roll the frames and catch them on the fingers well that's it guys thanks for watching have a great day i'm trying to get a little bit more done before the rain gets here have a good one